Good morning, church. <laughs> I told last service, I said, early bird gets the worm, and they were excited. They were ready for the word of God. How many of you guys are ready for the word this morning? How about our online family? Let us know that you're ready for the word this morning. I tell you what, um, we are in a really exciting times, not just as part of the kingdom of God, but just as the local church, what God is doing here at Mountain Movers uh, in this church family is just absolutely remarkable. And it's miraculous what God is doing right now. And so if, if you're new, if today's your first day, we wanna say welcome home. Uh, if you are uh, a regular mountain mover, but you just haven't been here in a few weeks, we are expanding our space in every direction so more families can have a place to experience real life change and we are believing they will make heaven their home. We believe that a, just a moment in the presence of God can literally change everything. And so it, it's so exciting to see what God is doing right now uh, through this stewardship campaign that we're calling Be the Church, Build the Church. And I, I want to I help you understand very quickly, if you're curious as to exactly what we're doing, we're expanding our space in four different areas. The first area we're expanding will be the worship space, the, the room that you're sitting in right now. The second space that we'll be expanding is our lobby space. How many of you guys know we need more lobby space? The third space is our kids' space. They need higher ceilings because they like to hang from the, from the ceilings. And then finally, our office space. And if you're a staff member or a church leader here, you know we need some of that. And so we're so excited to see what God is really doing. And tonight, I wanna bring to your attention tonight something that is very, very special and, and really vital. If there's any way possible for you to attend as your pastors, we are asking that you make it happen. It is called our Vision Cast Q&A. And it's going to be in this room. We're going to have two identical sessions tonight. And the purpose of this event is to bring you all together to gain a deeper clarity and an understanding of what is happening through the stewardship campaign. Exactly not, not only what we're doing with the buildings, you can ask all sorts of questions regarding the buildings, but then just to have a deeper understanding of, of what your commitment and what your involvement uh, can look like as we move forward into this campaign. So it's going to be very very crucial uh, that you come, you get all your questions answered because then you can go to the Lord and you can say, okay, God, like, what do you want me to do? What part do you want me to play? What role do you want me to play in this in this uh, kingdom event that, that you're making way for as we are making more room for families to make heaven their home. I wanna be a part of something bigger than myself. How many of you guys, before you leave this earth, you wanna be a part of something really big and really meaningful for the glory of God, amen? That's what God is doing in these last days, amen? That's what he is doing in, in the times that we're living in. So I'll say this too, if you cannot make it tonight, we will be having an online version for our online campus. That's you guys that are watching today. We'll have it for you and we'll have it for those that weren't able to make it physically tonight. That'll be this Tuesday night, October 24th at 6.30 p.m. That's gonna be live online. So make sure that you attend one of these uh, events so that you can move forward with what God has for you to do in, in these times right now. So... Um, as your pastors, man, our hearts are just stirring. I mean, with, with so much anticipation and so much excitement. But, you know, what we see more than ever and what we're enjoying seeing come together is the alignment of God's people. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a church family coming together and uniting uh, around one big idea, and that is going after people who don't know Jesus and helping them to make heaven their home. That is what this is really all about. And, and I, I want you to understand through this whole project, I guess, I guess I didn't tell you, the total cost, if you don't know the total cost of this project, it's only a million dollars. Now I say only because I know when you think a million dollars, you think to yourself, that's a lot of money. It is in the natural, but it's not in the supernatural. We're talking about a different economy that we're working under, and that is God's economy. He owns it all. He has all the resources in heaven. And when he pulls God's people together in sacrifice and surrender 
and in obedience and in commitment together, unified as the body of Christ. There is literally nothing that we can't do together. Literally, we can be unstoppable when we link arms and decide that we're going to do something big for God. And so that's what we want to talk to you about today as we bring you part five of this timely series. And we're calling today's message, The Power of Oneness. The Power of Oneness. Let's pray this morning. Father, we are grateful for your presence in this room and online. God, I am asking you to just unveil, God, the power of your written word to us, God. I pray that we would be hungry, that our hearts would be stirred for what you're doing for such a time as this, God. Help us to see the vision. Help us to hold the vision close to our hearts and help us to run in obedience, God, what you would have us to do in these last days. And Father, today we, we pray as you apply the word to our hearts here in, in, in the United States of America, God, we pray that on the other side of the world where your people are, the chosen people of God, the nation of Israel. God, we pray and agree together right now that you would bless and touch them. God, we pray that you would surround them with your Holy Spirit, that they would feel your love and your comfort. We pray peace, God, to, the, to Jerusalem and the land of Israel. We pray, God, protection over your people. We pray, God, for healing and restoration, God. The enemy has, has done so much destruction, God, in the physical to your people. And we are praying, God, that you would just build them up, God, emotionally and spiritually. Help them to be reminded today that there is a God in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who loves them so much. And through it all, I pray that Jesus would be glorified and that they would know him to be the Messiah, our Lord. God bless your people today, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. And there we go. Sorry, I'm behind, the, I'm behind a little bit. You know, one of the cool things that's going to happen tonight, as Brad said, as we have this vision cast that he didn't mention, is that we're going to dedicate the ground outside. And probably in all the stewardship campaigns we've done, all the building projects, which for 16 years, we've been building. We've been building. We've been building. But, but to me, the coolest part of all of it is seeing a group of people in the beginning it was a handful. The next time it was a little bigger, then a little the bigger, keeps getting bigger, then a little it? bigger. <laughs> and we literally will go out tonight and we will pray over the ground that we're about to expand. And to us, that is, we're dedicating that back to God. Because, you know, if it wasn't for God's power and his anointing upon this place and this ministry, none of us would be here. It's all completely supernatural that we're here in the middle of nowhere. We heard someone say the other day, they were talking to us and they said, you know, we were We'd been invited, I think they'd maybe seen the billboard in town and they decided that they were going to come to Mountain Movers and they plugged it into their GPS and they drove and they drove, this was that they're saying, and they drove and they drove and they thought this for has sure, to be a mistake. this has to be yeah. a mistake. This, there cannot be a church this far out. And then they finally found us and they said, what in the world? Who would build a church out here in the middle, in the middle of, of nowhere? nowhere? <laughs> so, you know, it's God, but it's so cool because we know that this is what God is doing. It's not what we're doing. And so when you come tonight, we're going to pray over the ground. We're going to anoint his property as we expand once again. So this morning, as Brad said, we are in part five. We're talking about the power of oneness. If you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 17, John chapter 17. If you got your phone, you can look it up on there. Today, we're going to start here. And basically this is a prayer that Jesus prayed the night before he was arrested. The night before he is arrested, he's going to be tried. He's going to be crucified. Jesus is with his disciples and he begins to pray this prayer over them. And I think it's a beautiful prayer. The entire chapter is a prayer, but at the very end of the prayer, he prays something that's so significant. And I want to share it with you today because he not only was praying for his disciples, but he was actually praying for all believers who would ever live. So today... If you are a believer, if you've invited Jesus into your heart, you have been prayed over by Jesus himself. I want to read this passage to you. I'm going to start in verse 20 and it says this, I do not pray for these alone. He's talking about the disciples. I'm not just praying for them. It's not for their sake only that I make this request as he's talking to his father, but for all, say all, for all those who will ever believe and trust in me 
through their message, verse 21, that they all may be one. Say one. This is what Jesus is praying. He's saying, I'm not just praying for the disciples. I'm praying for everyone who will ever believe that this is his prayer, that they will be one. Just as you, my father, and I are one. Jesus is talking about the oneness between God the Father and himself, that they also may be one in us. Here's why. Notice why he prays this. He says, so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. Now, it's really interesting. Anytime someone is praying something at the end of their life, to me, I've been there many times as people are taking their last breaths. And it's amazing when it's a believer and they're able still to speak. And Jesus knew in just hours, his life was coming to an end. In just hours, he was gonna lay down his life for you and for me. And he begins to pray this prayer and you think to yourself, man, he could have prayed anything. He could have prayed, let them be filled with power. Let them see signs and wonders. Let them have prosperity so that they can spread the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what he prayed was let them be one. Because what Jesus knew is that there was a power to oneness. There was a miracle to oneness. He knew that if we were united, if believers were united, that they would turn the world upside down with the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And guess what? He proved it in Acts chapter two. You see the birth of the church. You see the day of Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that the believers were all gathered together in one accord, all together in unity. Now, I think what's interesting is Jesus at this point, he's already died, he's resurrected, he's ascended back to heaven. He told the disciples and all of the followers, I want you to go to the upper room and I want you to wait. How many of you love the waiting room? Oh, nobody? Okay, me either. We don't like to wait. We like for things to happen like this. But for some reason, that's not how God rolls. He likes for us to wait at times. And he told the disciples, you go to the upper room, you guys get together, you pray and you wait, you tarry there. And in Acts chapter two, verse one, it says they were all in one mind and one accord. Different versions say it differently, but they were all unified. And what's interesting, when you look up the Greek definition of this term, one accord, this is exactly what it means. Check this out. In agreement unanimously, harmony leading to action. How many of you know it's hard to get 120 people to agree unanimously? You ever tried? Any leaders in the room? I mean, I was telling first service, you know, we come in here and we try so hard to inspire you and to get you involved in what's going on in God's house and in God's presence. And I can be like, lift your hands, like 20%. Clap your hands, maybe 50%. Kneel down, 20%. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm trying. You can't get unanimous. But somehow Jesus, he told his disciples, you guys got to get on the same page. Guess what? They didn't know what was about to happen. Now, if you're a believer and you've read the book of Acts, you know that that was the birthing of the, of the church. What was about to happen was an explosive birthing of the church of Jesus Christ. They did not know that. What they did was an act of obedience in waiting. They went into the upper room. They began to pray. They began to believe. God, you said that we were to be here to wait on you unanimously. They're in harmony together. And the power of the Holy Spirit falls. They're all filled. And that day, they go out and they begin to speak in other languages, languages they didn't know. And they begin to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in other languages. And that day, so many people, thousands heard the gospel message preached. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 that over 3,000 people that day gave their lives to Christ. Why? The power of of oneness, a church united. You wanna know why? Because Jesus is all about people coming to know him. He gave his life for people. He was all about people. And guess who we are all about? People. When you come to this church, it's not about a social club. It's not about a concert. It's not about the coffee, although it's amazing. It's about leading people into a real and a life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious. Why? Because Jesus was all about people. We are all about people. 
But it takes us being one. The psalmist, I love what the psalmist said in Psalms 133, verse 1. He says this, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Jump down to verse 3. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there, don't miss this, for there the Lord commanded the blessing. The Lord commanded the blessing on the unity. We see there's so much power in us being united. But can I tell you, there's a price to pay for unity. Unity is not just something you can just think, you know, we need to get on the same page. How many of you are married in this room? How many of you know that there are times in your life when you're not exactly on the same page as the person you married? Oh, oh yeah. All of you that were married, the other ones were like, no, we don't have any problems. We're Look just at perfect. These faces. No. Let me tell you. Now, newly, newlyweds, you need to listen up. This I know, gonna, right? This is a good I get one. hot. Okay. The fact is, when we get married, the Bible says in Genesis, it's a beautiful picture that the two shall become what? You say it. Come on. The two shall become one. Not just physically, spiritually, emotionally, that we come together on the same page. And guess what happens over and over and over and over and over in our life is the enemy tries to weasel his way in. And he tries to bring about division. He tries to bring about a word we call conflict. And what we begin to do is, you know, forget you. You know what Amos chapter three and verse three says, man, this has been a staple in our life and in our marriage. It says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the same direction? The answer to that is no. If I decide I'm going this way, Brad, forget you. I'm going to go do my own thing over here. Do you know that God can't put his blessing on that home? That a house divided cannot stand. So if you're married today, it's not just a oneness. It's not just the power in the church, but it's in the marriage and it's in the family and it's in the business. It's wherever there are people. God says, you got to get together, get on the same page, get around the same mission, the same purpose. Otherwise you're trying to go in two different directions. And I can't bless that. I can't put my covering over that. You guys are quiet. That was weird. I gave you like a perfect spot to like say amen or clap or something. You're just like, okay. Come on, listen to me. There's power in unity. There's power in oneness. I wanted to just ask you today, but I felt like this was a little bit forward. But you know, how many of you are just fighting today? Just fighting with some, come on, there's, we have some honest people. You know Matter what? Matter of fact, in the parking lot, right? That's right. <laughs> We're going to finish you? when service is over on the way home. <laughs> Honestly, Brad, in all, of our, in all of our marriage, what were the days that the enemy attacked us the hardest? The days we were doing ministry. Every time. Every time. Every time. Until we started figuring it out. Like, wait a minute. Because we realized, wait a second, why do I get angry at him every Sunday morning? Why am I so mad on Wednesday night right before we go lead worship? Why do you annoy me so bad on those days? This is getting but real. Tuesday and this Thursday and real. Friday. <laughs> I don't know if it's day. as real for you as it is for me, but it feels pretty real right now. <laughs> but you know, the fact is, what we begin to realize is the enemy has a strategy. He wanted us to be divided because guess what? There can't be the blessing if there's division. You don't have the miracle. You don't have the power of oneness unless you are unified. But guys, there's a price to pay and that price is self-sacrifice. That's not fun. Nobody likes that. We want our way. My way or the highway. We want our own way, but there's no power and there's no blessing in being selfish, which is human nature. But the blessing comes when we begin to say, you know what? It's not all about me. That's a tough thing to say. You should say that. It's not all about me. Go ahead. No, You're like, but I don't want to say that. Some of you didn't say it right. Some of you did not Some say it right. Went, I know. It's not all not about me. It. It's not all about me. There's power when we are willing to sacrifice for oneness. It's so, it's so real. The power of unity, it works both ways. It's, it's not only when we're doing big things for God. Right. Unity works, period. You, there is power in unity, period. If you know the story of the Tower of Babel, uh, whether you do or you don't, 
it, the people were uh, uh, all speaking the same language. They had one heart. They had one mind, but all for the wrong reason. And their desire was to build a huge tower so tall that they could be like God. And God, of course, came down and he, and he put a halt to all of their construction. But they were trying to build the wrong thing. But here's what this teaches us, that there truly is a power yeah. that comes with being unified, even if it's for the wrong thing. You see, the enemy, he rec- he's okay if there's unity as long as it's not for the right thing. As long as it's not a God thing, he's okay with unity. Because if God is for us, then who can be against us? That means that when we're all about the wrong thing, we're not doing God's thing. And so, you know, the enemy works really strategically to divide and conquer, not only in marriage, in the family, and in the local church, because he does not want to see us be one. He doesn't want to see us come together, one heart, one mind, one accord, to do something big and beautiful for God, where at the end of the day, Jesus is glorified and people make heaven their home. He doesn't want to see that happen. He'll do everything within his power to bring division and to conquer. Let me give you some examples. I figured this out for the first time. Just after I had been called into ministry, I was living in Jeff City. And if you've been around any length of time, you've heard me tell some of these crazy stories where for a, a full year, I was dealing with heavy, serious, physical, demonic fan- manifestations in my home. And it, it all had to do with my calling and God preparing me to, to do battle with the dark. And um, it was a crazy season of my life. But I remember one particular day that I'll I'll never forget. And my roommate was, uh, he really had become my best friend almost overnight. He was the worship pastor at our church. His father was the, was the senior pastor. And he just took me under his wing and just started discipling me, started training me to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ and how to do ministry. And I'm telling you, the enemy was all over us like crazy. And I remember one day, you just, I just felt this demonic oppression, this dark heaviness on us. And man, we were fighting each other like cats and dogs. I mean, we, we literally were so close to just throwing down. It was that bad. And, and, you know, we were living in this apartment together and I just shut my door. I was so mad. And he went and, and, and when he gets mad, this was to my advantage. When he got mad, he cleaned. So he was vacuuming on, on the other side. I'm like, do it, man. I don't care. Go for it. Clean the whole house. See if I care. Right? So he's vacuuming. I'm in my room in my office. And, and all of a sudden I hear all this loose change and things hitting my bedroom door. And, but he's in his bedroom on the other side of the house vacuuming. So I knew it wasn't him. So I'm like, all right, great. Because I'd been dealing with this stuff every night for months and months and months. And I knew it was just, it was, um, it was demons literally in my house. And how many of you guys have a, a junk drawer in your house? That's a drawer that you don't, can't find a home for it. It really has no place or purpose. So it makes the junk drawer. Okay. So and you don't want to throw it away. So you don't want to throw it away though. You want to leave it in the drawer. So you're never going to use it. But it just makes you sleep better at night. You know what I'm saying? So this, all these contents were taken out of the drawer and thrown against my bedroom door. And I opened the door and I looked down and there is a piece of paper. And, I, I, and all this loose change out of the drawer. Crazy stuff happened. I don't have time to get into it. But like at night, like all the candles in the house would, would, light, would light up. And music would start playing to the top, just cranked on I mean, crazy stuff. Anyway, so I pick up this piece of paper and I look on it and it says in this crooked, like eerie looking handwriting, looks like you boys are at it again. See you tonight. Literally a note written to me from a demon because he's still in his bedroom vacuuming. Like, he did not do this. And so I learned in that moment, okay, I'm literally feeding this. I made this happen because I allowed anger into my heart, which created dissension in our brotherly love towards one another. And there was that, that, that dissension and that anger that we allowed in. And because I allowed that in, I opened up a portal giving the demons spiritual, biblical license to wreak havoc. And lo and behold... 
that night, there they were manifesting again, worse than ever, because I, I opened the door. He, it, you have to understand, and the same thing happens in your marriage. There will be times when you guys are at each other's throats, and it's not, it's not just coincidence. It's not just because you're just making each other mad. It's because it's an oppressive, demonic spirit that's trying to tear your marriage apart, because God knows that we are better together, that we're stronger together, embracing one another, and, and when and two or three are gathered agreeing on any one thing. There's nothing that's impossible for any of us when we're in Christ. I remember we were uh, early in our marriage when we first started the church. We had been fighting and it was clearly her fault. Um, and we're, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> It really was her fault. So we're laying there in bed in the dark, and man, we are mad. We are not talking. You could cut the air with a knife. It was so thick. There's so much anger in the room. And I remember we heard this, you know, we're on as far, and we couldn't afford a very big bed, so it's like a twin, and we're like three inches apart. We're like, I am as far as I can get from you. You're thinking, why don't you go Good. sleep on the couch, but we're way too I stubborn. I hate being poor, but Neither we are so one of us are gonna close leave. right now, and I want to be far, but I'm not sleeping on the couch. So we are so stubborn, the both of us. None of us have ever slept on the couch because, well, we're too prideful. So we're like, I'm going to win. No one's sleeping on the couch. So it's, it's really helped our marriage. So we're laying there, angry, in silence. Normally, I pray with her before we go to sleep, or at least hold her. None of that. And we hear, we feel this demonic presence enter our home. And none of the stuff happened like happened with me in Jeff City with my roommate. But some, some things have happened. But we opened a door. I felt this demonic spirit enter our home. And we're laying there in bed in the dark. And we hear this crash in the living room. And I'm like, no. All right, let's go deal with this. So walk out in the living room and we had this huge mirror. It ha had to weigh over 20 pounds. It was very heavy and it was hanging on a nail that was nailed into a stud in the wall. And beneath the mirror, the mirror was all of our wedding pictures. Everything wedding related was right there beneath the mirror. That mirror had been lifted up and thrown down on top of all of our wedding pictures. The, there was glass and it was shattered. The mirror was broken, thrown down. Now, some of you are thinking, there, there's a reasonable explanation. You know, the nail pulled out of the wall. No, the nail was still there. So this, this demon lifted it up off the nail and it fell on all of our wedding pictures, which is just to show, you know, the wedding pictures were symbolic of what the enemy was saying, I'm going to do everything within my demonic power to destroy your marriage. Here's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> there is power in unity. God wants us to bind together, not only in marriage, not only in family, but in the local church. He does not, and, and the reason why is he does not want to see you grow spiritually. Right. When there's disunity, you're not gonna grow. That's, right. That's why we push life groups so hard. You gotta get into a life group you got to get that bond of unity with brothers and sisters in the church, in Christ, and grow in your relationship. He doesn't want to see you stepping out and, and, and growing in your faith and trusting God and, and, and realizing that, that your giving actually means something, that God wants to use that to bring glory to his name. He doesn't want you to experience God opening the windows of heaven and pouring out for you a blessing so great you're unable to contain it, which only comes by sacrificial giving through the tithes, according to Malachi. He doesn't want you to understand that or to get that. That. So he, he doesn't want you to be unified together as the local church, understanding God's word, living out your purpose in these last days. He doesn't want to see you be a part of this end time revival that is happening. And, and we are about to see greater things than we could ever imagine happening, not only in the kingdom of God, but right here at Mountain Rivers Church. They're going to come from every direction. And we're expanding our space because God is going to fill this room. He's going to fill it with so many people that don't know Jesus. And they're going to come. They're not going to know why they're coming, but they're going to come supernaturally. They're going to show up and we're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without apology. And they're going to surrender to him and they're going to make heaven their home. But it's only going to happen if we, 
the body of Christ are unified together for one heart, with one heart, one mind, one mission, one purpose to expand these buildings, to make room for people, to, 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 to link arms together and believe that, that together we are capable of doing something way bigger than any of us could do on our own. I wanted so bad this morning to, to do this illustration, but I knew we, we logistically and time-wise, we just couldn't pull it off. But I want you to imagine if all of us just got up right now and we made a big circle around this room and we just linked arms. And I, I, I could tell you very assuredly that, that whoever would be standing to your left, they're maybe not going to commit you know, in, in, in this offering for this building project. They're not going to commit what you are. That amount might be totally and completely different as we put our resources together for God's glory. And, and the person that stands to your right, he may not be giving what you're giving. And here's the point. We're all going to come together. We're going to hear God and we're going to simply obey him. We're just going to say, God, what part do you want me to play in all of this? And then in, in the unified body of Christ that he's called us to be, we're going to come together arm in arm, different amounts. It's not the money that matters. It is obedience because here's what's going to happen. If all of us will truly, that's why I said, this isn't a building campaign. This is a stewardship campaign. This is not God building buildings. This is God building you and me to be able to hear from God to pray together as a couple. Now, what's going to get real now? How often have you been praying with your spouse, right? This is an opportunity through this stewardship campaign for you to come together and pray and get on the same page and hear from God together and then step out in faith together to do something bigger than you feel comfortable with. If you're comfortable with it, you probably haven't heard from God. I'm just being honest with you. If it doesn't stretch you, you probably need to wait a little bit longer because God wants to stretch your faith, not, not, not your finances. He's wanting to stretch your faith. He wants you to hear from him. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to obey him. And then he wants you to see the fruit of your faith. When we build these buildings and they are filled with people and you, and, you, and you hear, okay, yes, I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Praise God. I see your, thank you. You up in the, up in the top. I see your hand. I see your hand. All of us are going to get to say, hey, I had a part in that. I had a part in that. So here's what we're doing. Next Sunday, I know I told you tonight is like it. This is going to be the most amazing event, and it is. But this is next week. So, so tonight, for this week, this is going to be the most amazing event, the Q&A Vision Cast. But next week, the next biggest, crazy, most awesome event is going to be Commitment Sunday. How many of you guys have been here for any of our baptisms? Yes, that's next Sunday. So we're not only going to see people commit publicly professing Christ as Lord of their life through water baptism. But we as a church family are going to come together and we are going to commit to the Lord our biggest and best first fruit offerings. And we're going to lay it before the Lord's feet. And we're going to say, here we are, Lord, surrendered in sacrifice, in unity, committed to you. And we are going to, our minds are going to be blown at what God does with us together. I want you to think, if each of us will just do what God wants us to do, imagine what God will do with us. Imagine what he will do with us. Let's pray today. Father God, we are so anticipating this spirit of excitement that is in our hearts. God, we are anticipating that you're about to really do something great in us, your church. God, we look forward to stepping out and, and, and growing in our ability to hear you and our ability to trust you. God, you're doing something in us, your people. I pray, Lord, that we would be more unified than ever before, God. I pray that we would see that how, how real the enemy is and how he seeks to, to, to tear down and to destroy and to, to separate us out and conquer God to divide us up and conquer Lord we know he's at work God but we're not the victims Lord we are the victors God we have the victory in Christ Jesus our Lord you have empowered us in these last days to be your church and to build your church so with heads bowed and eyes closed today if you're watching online if you're in this room 
the reason that we are doing all of this, the reason that we're even here and exist as a church is to help people make heaven their home. That's what this life is all about. We're on assignment until we stand before the master and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so I just wanna ask you today, are you in a real and life changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious? If you aren't, this is your moment, this is your time. This is why God brought you here today was to make this decision that will impact your eternity. He's promised you so many things, but he has not promised you one more minute on planet earth. So why not now, why not you right now surrender your life to Jesus and make him Lord of your life? If you're in this room, eyes closed, if that's you, I just, will you just show me your hand today? Cause I'm gonna be praying for you this week. I wanna know who you are. Thank you. I see three hands up the sides, two hands on my right. Thank you, Lord. I see hands on my left. Thank you, Father God. Six, seven people just made just change their eternity. Isn't that crazy? Praise God. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. And I want to just tell you, those that raised your hand, God loves you so much. Jesus was thinking about you the moment he was hanging on the cross. He was thinking about you. He gave his life for you and he would do it all over again if he had to. So we're going to pray a prayer together today, asking God to forgive us of our sins believing that Jesus is Lord and confessing him to be Lord of our lives. Let's pray this prayer together. Father, please forgive me of my sins. I believe with all my heart, Jesus is Lord. He's the son of God. I confess with my mouth that he is Lord of my life from this moment forward. Help us to be unified in spirit. Help us to be your church. Help us to build your church. Help us to help others make heaven their home. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.